Hey, Shalom, Israel, Most High in Christ, bless. This is Captain Matt Adias, to my right. Officer Judiah. And to my left. Soldier Los Ayas. Hey, today's topic is Ruth was an Israelite destroyed in 15, 15, 15 minutes. minutes. All right, we're going to jump right into it. Give me that. The book of Ruth, chapter 4, verse 13. Come on. So Boaz took Ruth, and she was his wife. And when he went in unto her, the Lord gave her conception, and she bare a son. Read. And the woman said unto Naomi, Blessed be the Lord, which hath not left thee this day without a kinsman, that his name may be famous in Israel. Jump down to verse 17. Verse 17. And the woman, her neighbors, gave her a name, saying, There is a son born to Naomi, and they called his name Obed. He is the father of Jesse, the father of David. Come on. Now these are the generations of Pharez. And Pharez begat Hezron, and Hezron begat Ram, and Ram begat Amenadab, and Amenadab begat Nashon, and Nashon begat Salmon, and Salmon begat Boaz, and Boaz begat Obed, and Obed begat Jesse, and Jesse begat David. And from that lineage came our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ, who was an Israelite. So a lot of Israelites, they get that, um, that ideology in their head, that roof had to be an Israelite because she was in the lineage of Christ, all right? But we're going to read the book of Ruth to get some understanding today. All right, give me Ruth chapter 1, verse 1. Ruth chapter 1 and verse 1. Now it came to pass in the days when the judges ruled that there was a famine in the land. Come on. And a certain man of Bethlehem, Judah, went to sojourn in the country of Moab. He and his wife and his two sons. Read on. And the name of the man was Elimelech. And the name of his wife, Naomi, and the name of his two sons was Malon and Chilon, Ephrathites of Beth Bethlehem, Judah. Come on. And they came into the country of Moab and continued there. So what do you have? You have some Israelites that are dwelling in the land of Moab, which are the uh, so-called Chinese today. All right. Read on. And Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died, and she was left, and her two sons. Read. And they took them wives of the women of Moab. Of what? Of the women of Moab. All right, so her two sons took wives of the women of Moab, meaning what? Women of that land. Read. The name of the one was Ophah, and the name of the other, Ruth. Was who? Ruth. Jump down to verse 8. Verse 8. And Naomi said unto her two daughters-in-law, Go, return each to her mother's house. The Lord dealt kindly with you. As ye have dwelt with the dead and with me. Come on. The Lord grant you that ye may find rest, each of you in the house of her husband. Then she kissed them, and they lifted up their voice and wept. Watch this. And they said unto her, Surely we will return with thee unto thy people. And so, so they said, Surely we will return with thee unto thy people. So why did uh, did the uh, daughter-in-law have to make that distinction? Because she knew she was not an Israelite. Both daughter-in-laws, uh, Ruth and Orpah, knew that they were not Israelites. All right. Now we're gonna come right back, but I want to I want to touch a point. Give me Deuteronomy chapter twenty-one verse ten, real quick. Deuteronomy chapter twenty-one verse ten. Because a lot of you may be wondering, how is that lawful that these Israelites married um, heathen women? All right. Watch this. When thou goest forth to war against thine enemies, come on, and the Lord thy God hath delivered them into thine hands, and thou hast taken them captive, and seest among the captives a beautiful woman, come on, and hast a desire unto her that thou wouldest have her to thy wife, then thou shalt bring her home to thine house, and she shall shave her head and par her nails, and she shall put the raiment of her captivity come on. from off her. And shall remain in thine house, and bewail her father and her mother a full month. Uh -huh. And after that, thou shalt go in unto her, and be her husband. And be her what? And be her husband. Read on. And she shall be thy wife. So here's an example, according to the law, where the Most High God justified the marriage between what? An Israelite and a an heathen. Somebody outside of the nation of Israel. From there, give me uh, Judges, chapter 21, verse 25. Judges chapter 21 and verse 25. Come on. In those days. In which days? In those days. Come on. There was no king in Israel. So at this time, during the time of what? Where are you reading from? Judges. Judges. During the time of the judges, there was no kings in Israel. Read it again from the top. In those days. Come on. There was no king in Israel. Uh-huh. Every man did 
that which was right in his own eyes. Every man did that which was right according to his own eyes. Now, read Ruth chapter 1 verse 1. Ruth chapter 1 and verse 1. Come on. Now it came to pass in the days when the judges ruled. Within the days of when? The judges ruled. So what do we see? We see Israelites living during the time of the judges and they did what? They did what was right in their own eyes. Okay. Now, let's go back to uh, Judges. Let's read. I'm sorry, Ruth. Let's read verse 14. Verse 14. Come on. And they lifted up their voice and wept again. Uh -huh. And Opa kissed her mother-in-law. So the Moabite kissed her mother-in-law. Read. But Ruth claimed unto her. Meaning what? Orpah decided, you know what? I am going to stay in the land of my captivity. I'm sorry, nativity. I am going to stay where I grew up and where I am from, which is the land of Moab. Read it again from the top. And they lifted up their voice and wept again. And Opah kissed her mother-in-law. But Ruth clave unto her. But Ruth said, no, I want to stay with Naomi. I want to stay with my mother-in-law. Read. And she, and she said, behold, thy sister-in-law is gone back unto her people. So Orpah has gone back unto who? Her people. Unto her people. Meaning what? She's a Moabite. That's her people. Read. And unto her gods. And unto what? Her gods. And unto her gods. Stop right there. So that is a clear cut. If you're spiritual and if you study, you would understand immediately that Ruth and Orpah are not Israelites. Yeah, you got to understand that. Give me that in First Chronicles chapter 16 and verse 20. Watch this. The book of First Chronicles chapter 16 verse 20. Come on. And when they went from nation to nation and from one kingdom to another people, uh -huh. he suffered no man to do them wrong. Yea, he reproved kings for their sakes. Come on. Saying, touch not mine anointed. And do my prophets no harm. Read. Sing unto the Lord all the earth. Show forth from day to day his salvation. Declare his glory among the heathen. His marvelous works from, excuse me, his marvelous works among all nations. Uh -huh. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He also is to be feared above all gods. To be feared above all gods. So that's showing you, yeah, there may be other gods, but there's only one true God. Read. For all the gods of the people. All the gods of the people, read. Are idols. Are what? Are idols. Now, give me that in Ruth real quick. Ruth chapter 1, verse uh, 15. Watch this. Ruth chapter 1, verse 15. Come on. And she said, Behold, thy sister-in-law is gone back unto her people and unto her gods. And unto her gods. That's a lowercase g. That's showing you that that is not the Most High God of Israel. That's the gods of the Moabites. That's what you got to understand. Verse 16, and Ruth said, entreat me not to leave thee or to return from following after thee. For whether thou goest, I will go. And where thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people. You see that? Ruth just said, your people is going to be my people. All right. So she humbly admitted she humbly admitted, you know what? I want to go with you. I want to be amongst the Israelites. So I'm going to humble down and I'm going to become you. Whatever you do, that's what I'm going to do. Come on. And thy God, my God. Now that's the key. And thy God, my God. Now, give me that in 1 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 7. Watch this. She said, thy God, the God of the Israelites, now is going to be my God. Watch this. 1 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 7. Come on. Then on that day, David delivered first this psalm to thank the Lord into the hand of Asaph. David delivered a what? Then David delivered this psalm. Give me Psalms chapter 96, verse 4 and 5. Psalms chapter 96 and verse 4. Come on. For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. We just read that back in Chronicles, but we're hitting you with it again. Watch this. For all the gods of the nations are idols. All the gods of the nations are idols, read. But the Lord made the heavens. But the Lord made the heavens. Now give me the book of Ruth, chapter 1, verse 16. The book of Ruth, chapter 1, verse 16. Come on. And Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave thee, or to return from following after thee. For whither thou goest, I will go. And where thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people, Come on. and thy God, my God. Perfect. So from there, let's go to Ruth uh, chapter 2 and pick up at verse 5. Ruth chapter 2 verse 5. Come on. Then said Boaz unto his servant, 
that was set over the reapers, whose damsel is this? And the servant that was set over the reapers answered and said, It is the Moabitish damsel. It is the what? The Moabitish damsel. Come on. That came back with Naomi out of the country of Moab. Out of the country of Moab. The only people who are confused are those who are online that are doing what? They're listening to every Israelite camp, but not studying the Bible. Nowhere in the scriptures is it saying that Ruth is an Israelite. You won't find it. All right, read on. Verse 7. And she said, I pray you, let me glean and gather after the reapers among the sheaves. Come on. So she came and hath continued even from the morning until now that she tarried a little in the house. Read. Then said Boaz unto Ruth, Hearest thou not my daughter? Go not to glean in another field. Uh -huh. Neither go from hence, but abide here fast by my ma by my maiden. So Boaz said, no, you know what? Stay right here. I, I want to make sure, I want to keep an eye out on you. All right, come on. Let thine eyes be on the field that they do reap. Come on. And go thou after them. Have I not charged the young men that they shall not touch thee? And when thou art Arthas, go unto the vessels and drink of that which the young men have drawn. Now watch this. Verse 10 is very key. Come on. Then she fell on her face and bowed herself to the ground and said unto him, Why have I found grace in thine eyes? that thou shouldest take knowledge of me. So Ruth is asking, you know, what have I done that's so great that you as an Israelite, you're looking so keenly and so kindly for me being a Moabite. Why is that? Read on. Seeing I am a stranger. Ruth admits that she's a what? I am a stranger. So if Ruth has no problem admitting that she's not an Israelite, why do you Israelites have a hard time admitting that she wasn't an Israelite? Give me the book of Leviticus chapter 25 and verse 44. Leviticus chapter 25 and verse 44. Come on. Both thy bondmen and thy bondmaids, which thou shalt have, shall be of the heathen. Of the who? Of the heathen. Read. That are round about you. Come on. Of them shall ye buy bondmen and bondmaids. Read. Moreover, of the children of strangers that do sojourn among you, of them shall ye buy. And of their families that are with you, which they begat in your land, and they shall be your possession. And the strangers shall be our possession. Watch this. And ye shall take them as an inheritance for your children after you, to inherit them for a possession. They shall be your bondmen forever. Read. But over your brethren. Over your what? Your brethren. Come on. The children of Israel. Ye shall not rule one over another with rigor. Exactly, because there's a difference between the strangers and the children of Israel. Give me Deuteronomy 28, 43 real quick. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 43. Come on. The stranger that is within thee shall get up above thee very high, and thou shalt come down very low. Just in case you were confused, the stranger is not talking about in that setting or in that situation. It's not talking about Israelites. It's talking about the other nations. Because remember, when you read Deuteronomy 28, 15 through 68, those are curses. All right, read this again. The stranger that is within thee shall get up above thee very high. Come on. And thou shalt come down very low. He shall lend to thee, and thou shalt not lend to him. All right, so let's go back to the book of Ruth, chapter 2 and verse 10. Watch this. The book of Ruth, chapter 2, verse 10. Come on. Then she fell on her face and bowed herself to the ground and said unto him, why have I found grace in thine eyes, uh -huh. that thou shouldest take knowledge of me, seeing I am a stranger? A stranger. Read on. And Boaz answered and said unto her, It had fully been showed me all that thou hast done unto thy mother-in-law since the death of thine husband. Come on. And how thou hast left thy father and thy mother and the land of thy nativity. And the land of what? And the land of thy nativity. Nativity. The land of your nativity. What is that? Give me that in Merriam-Webster's dictionary. Merriam-Webster, the place of origin. Your nativity means what? The place of origin. Meaning what? Your homeland, where you come from. What was her nativity? The land of Moab, all right? From there, let's jump up to chapter 3, all right? Actually, give me verse 19 in chapter 2. Give me that real quick. Ruth, chapter 2, verse 19. Come on. And her mother-in-law said unto her, Where hast thou gleaned today? And where wantest thou? Blessed be he that did take knowledge of thee. And she showed her mother-in-law, whom she had wrought, and said, 
The man's name was whom I rock today is Boaz. All right, that's who she's been talking to this day. All right, read on. And Naomi said unto her daughter-in-law, Blessed be he of the Lord, who has not left of his kindness to the living and to the dead. And Naomi said unto her, The man is near of kin unto us. Now that's key. That's very, very key. Naomi said, hey, this man, Boaz, he's near of kin unto us. Read on. One of our next kinsmen. Now drop that. Now give me chapter three. Ruth, chapter three, verse one. Then Naomi, her mother-in-law, said unto her, My daughter, shall I not seek rest for thee, that it may be well with thee? Come on. And now it is not Boaz of our kindred, with whom maidens thou wast. Behold, he went with barley tonight in the threshing floor. Wash thyself, therefore, and anoint thee, and put thy raiment upon thee, and get thee down to the floor. But make not thyself known unto the man until he have done eating and drinking. All right, so Naomi is telling Ruth exactly what to do. All right, she's saying, hey, wait till he's eaten, wait till he gets in the bed, then come unto him. All right, remember what we just read in chapter 2. He is near of kinsmen, all right, unto her uh, late husband. All right, read on. Verse 4. And it shall be when he lieth down that thou shalt mark place, excuse me, mark the place where he lie. And thou shalt go in and uncover his feet and lay thee down, and he will tell thee what thou shalt do. Read on. And she said unto her, All that thou sayest unto me, I will do. All right, so Ruth humbly agreed, all right? Um, let's just jump down. Jump down to verse 9. Ruth chapter 3 verse 9. Come on. And he said, Who art thou? And she answered, I am Ruth thy handmaid. Spread therefore thy skirt over thy handmaid, for thou art a near kinsman. Why did she do that? Because he was a near kinsman. What was he applying? Or what were they applying? Give me that in Deuteronomy chapter 25 and verse 5. Deuteronomy chapter 25 and verse 5. Come on. If brethren dwell together and one of them die, and have no child, the wife of the dead shall not marry without unto a stranger. Come on. Her husband's brother shall go in unto her and take her to him to wife. Come on. And perform the duty of an husband's brother unto her. Why did they do this? Because they did it according to the law. All right, y'all have to understand they were keeping the law to the best of their ability. All right, her late husband passed away, but Boaz was the near kinsman to apply Deuteronomy chapter 25, verse 5. All right, let's go back to the book of Ruth, uh, back at verse 9 and jump to verse 4. I'm sorry, chapter 4, we're going to close out. The book of Ruth, chapter 3, verse 9. Come on. And he said, Who art thou? And she answered, I am Ruth, thy handmaid. Spread therefore thy skirt over thine handmaid. For thou art a near kinsman. For thou art a near kinsman. Now, let's go to the book of... Uh, Ruth chapter 4 verse 13 Ruth chapter 4 verse 13 Come on So Boaz took Ruth and she was his wife And when he went in unto her The Lord gave her conception And she bare a son So they applied the law Nowhere in the scriptures are you ever going to find That Ruth was an Israelite It's not in there But Lord's will you got some understanding today And that doctrine has now been shattered With that we say shalom Shalom, shalom. Daniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. 
Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us. Subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.